So, Evgenia, if we sum up all the statements of all uh, politicians from all over the world, and in the context, of course, in the context of aid for Ukraine, it looks very encouraging, very encouraging and picture perfect. Another package of sanction against uh, Russia is being included. Uh, concluded, I'm sorry, Ukraine is uh, promised uh, help, monetary and uh, mm, military. But is it real like, like this? What worries you personally the most? Um, I think the biggest challenge uh, to find the picture of the victory for Ukraine so we would see this picture uh, the same mm -hmm. with our partners. Because uh, when we hear that we will support you as long as it takes, well, Ukraine doesn't want to take it long. We lose lives uh, every day. So uh, we, our message is um, to get enough aid, to get enough of military support, uh, enough of sanctions for Russia, to bring victory of Ukraine closer. And this is mutual interest for both democratic world and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely agree with you, but Ukraine don't have time. And Russia is preparing for protracted conflict, uh, counting on the fact that West support uh, for Ukraine may weaken over time. And do you think Western partners understand that the time is really crucial, not only for Ukraine, but for the rest of the world? democratic world? Yes, I think that uh, the, the essence of time, that why time is important, uh, there is understanding, especially when we see that Russia tries to influence democracies with the instruments of democracies. They try to influence elections to bring populists into power in different countries and then trying to uh, veto Ukraine's uh, access to EU through Hungary. Or um, uh, I think th there is conspiracy behind this uh, uh, block blockade of uh, Polish uh, truck drivers uh, at the border uh, because the you know it, it's been organized by the party which is very friendly uh, with Russia and uh, said that no sanctions should be imposed and everything. So Russia will be trying at the same time um, influencing the Western world from inside with propaganda, with uh, financing political movements, NGOs, and so uh, so on and so forth. Um, and at the same time, of course, uh, inside of uh, Russia, they do not care about what people think. And, and it looks like that Russian people will not ever go and have riots against Putin. Um, so th they don't care about, you know, the, the mass death. They take these uh, soldiers and send them um, as in First uh, World War, uh, just waves and waves. They can afford it. Because um, they are big, they have, uh, they don't uh, uh, value any uh, exactly, life. Exactly, exactly. They are they are bigger in population than Ukraine, but also they don't value life. Um, and uh, um, we um, also uh, have to understand that the, as I said, the aid, um, and my friends, politicians from Western world also understand that they say, okay, we understand we should give you not. 30 tanks, but 300 tanks. But why didn't they do that? Because we need ammunition, we need military support, and we need it badly. I mean, Ukraine needed it badly, and now, not tomorrow. We need it yesterday, for oh, yesterday. Well, first, I think that the world was not prepared that uh, such conventional war uh, will be possible in the heart of Europe after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. um, and Russia was you know, preparing, using the Soviet era stuff and, and uh, like that. Um, but um, also, uh, I think it's, it, it's, it, you know, the mentality sometimes changes uh, longer than it should. For example, now we feel great support from Germany. Uh, they just, you know, the, the Minister of Defense just came, announced another billion package of aid, but it took uh, very long from giving caskets. Oh, yeah, this is my one of my questions. Exactly. What is, what is the, such a huge changes uh, in behavior, in attitudes, Germany's attitudes? 
towards Ukraine since the beginning of the, uh, Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, yeah? And with, as you mentioned, only 5,000 Kaska uh, helmets, prote protective helmets were uh, delivered. And, yes, now, and now we get, uh, you know, tanks, uh, everything, the, the air not, defense, which is very important. Uh, but again, uh, why it took so long? Because uh, inside of the society, there was the, the change. And I was talking to uh, uh, my friends from Bundestag and uh, they're very pro-Ukrainian, but they were trying to explain, saying that, can you imagine, it's such a drastic change. I mean, we give uh, tanks that will be killing Russians, and uh, America applauses. So th that's something, you know, the picture they could never imagine. And Germany had this, you know, trauma uh, after Second World War and, and yes, after I know Nazi the and everything. Yeah. Um, uh, but what is important, and we just uh, had a, um, a very good conversation and meeting with the German delegation on the margins of the OCE Parliamentary Assembly uh, in Yerevan, just returned from Armenia. And they said that um, count on us with the support on the long run, because uh, just, of course, we are together, with heart, you know, yeah, very emotional and everything, yes. yeah. and, and, uh, and, and values and everything. But also, they feel that uh, the national interest of Germany is to help Ukraine. Because if Ukraine falls, then the next countries would be, you know, Baltic states, it's also NATO countries, it's going to be, you know, even bigger jeopardy than uh, is now. And the same thing and the same arguments and the same, f uh, um, you know, facts that we use for uh, United States. Uh, because uh, um, what happens when um, countries in Europe that are member states of NATO feel some threats? Uh, they call for more troops. And usually they call for more troops from Canada, from United States. And if the war breaks, um, you know, within the borders, it means that Americans will have troops on the ground. Brits will have troops on the ground and will be fighting. So it's much, I, I, I don't want to say it, um, you know, to, to sound it uh, um, not serious, but it's much cheaper for them to help Ukraine yes. to win.